Welcome to video 4.3 for the UOIT AEDT program's Adult Learning in a Digital Context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. So before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. Now pause and go to week four and download the anticipation guide. When you are finished, come back and we'll continue. This is an anticipation guide. Before you go any further, only fill in the first column. Why am I asking you to do this? When you have simply placed true or false, continue viewing the video. You will revisit the third column after you have finished week four's work, and you will also need to provide justification. Last week, we introduced the backwards design model. This week, we will take a look at how we might implement this process. Hmm, what types of knowledge might this planning model represent? We start with the end, the what is worthy of learning, as described by Wiggins and McTighe, or what is it that the students will hopefully learn or do by the end of the course? Then, we don't actually start with planning the learning experiences. Rather, we consider the assessment, the how will we know that students have learned, the what is evidence of learning. Lastly, we then plan the instructional experiences that will hopefully guide the students to the end goal or learning objectives. So this knowledge has to do with the procedure of some sort, but this process is not always linear, as one might think, but rather dynamic and sometimes blurry and messy. So how do we go from planning with the end in mind to students achieving the learning objectives? Which way do we go? Yes, we start with the end. The what is worthy of learning or what is it that the students will hopefully learn or do by the end of the course or learning experience? Where do we go for that? Yes, we start with the end, the what is worthy of learning, or what is it that the students will hopefully learn or do by the end of the course or learning experience. Where do we go for that? Yes, the end, or the learning objectives. They articulate the knowledge and skills students will acquire by the end of the course or learning experiences. So that is why we start at the end. We need to make decisions about what indeed is worthy of learning. So let's take a look at this week's module. What is it that you were going to learn or be able to do? Or in other words, what is worthy of learning? Yes, the learning objectives. They are listed in week four. Let's take a look. Notice the bolded black words. What do they represent? Notice the bolded blue words. What do they represent? Pause the video and consider what the bolded black and blue words represent. Hopefully, you figured out that the black words represent various cognitive processes identified in the cognitive dimension of the revised taxonomy table, and the blue words represent various elements on the knowledge dimension of the revised taxonomy table, or different types of knowledge. Why? Where did I obtain these verbs? Please go to this resource listed under week four to review. Now, what if all of your course objectives looked like this on the grid? What do you think? Is this a problem? Why or why not? What if all of your learning objectives for a week looked like this on the grid? What do you think? Is this a problem? Why or why not? Please take a moment to pause and consider. Be prepared to discuss in tutorial. Okay, so now we know what is worthy of learning. And now we jump to what is evidence of learning. Remember, gathering evidence of student learning is assessment. And its basic purpose is to improve student learning. There are formative and summative assessments. Formative assessment is done in an ongoing manner. 
by gathering and providing ongoing feedback so that the students and instructor could use the feedback to enhance understandings or for learning. We also have summative assessments, which are used as a measure of student learning or skill acquisition or academic achievement at the conclusion of a defined instructional period. This could happen at the end of a unit of learning or project or a semester. Consider all the ways in which we will gather evidence of student learning this week for formative purposes, for the purposes of providing feedback to enhance student learning. Provide one example in the week four area with a rationale using the appropriate vocabulary. Okay, so now we know what is worthy of learning and you determine the various ways in which evidence of learning will be acquired. Now we can start to more closely examine the learning experiences or put another way. So this refers to the teaching and learning strategies, the questions, the activities, the readings. Please go to week four and examine several visual planners to assist you with this backwards planning. Those planners might be useful in your own practice, but also to help you with the first assignment. Once you finish filling out your anticipation guide, take a closer look at your pre and post responses. Consider one area in which you feel you have gained greater clarity or an area that may still be muddy. Please post this one area of clarity or area of continued muddiness on week four and indicate how you know you have greater clarity or what you will do to help clear things up. So there's lots to pull together this week. Take a look at these questions. So to recap, this video pulled items together and applied concepts related to backwards design. Thanks for watching.